This country is under attack after a year and a half of the Democrats digging for dirt to try to connect President Trump to some supposed crime that happened at the Capitol on January 6th. They found nothing. So, as I'm sure you heard, his personal residence was raided by the FBI yesterday at Mar-a-Lago looking for stolen classified documents that he allegedly removed from the White House after he left the Oval Office. First of all, a president can declassify anything that he wants to. Second, even if that wasn't the case, in order for him to have committed a crime of removing classified material from a secure location, he would have had to have knowingly removed it. And since his staff were the ones who packed his things and then brought the boxes to Mar-a-Lago, if there just so happens to be a classified document in one of those boxes, President Trump didn't know because he wasn't the one who put it there. And third, when rumors or accusations started swirling that he might have stolen classified material, he invited the FBI to come and look through all of the material that he brought to Mar-a-Lago just to be sure. But instead, they decided to raid his personal residence when he was out of town, he was in New York, and then they even broke into his personal safe where they found nothing. This is COINTELPRO 101. If you haven't heard of COINTELPRO, it's an old declassified FBI program that they admit was routinely involved in breaking the law in order to harass and spy on people in the civil rights movement and anti-war activists during the Vietnam War, including, of course, Martin Luther King. And like all corrupt government programs, after they get caught, they claim that they shut it down, and that's just something that they used to do, which is obviously always a lie. Of course, it's no coincidence this happened just a few hours after bogus photos were first published showing proof that Donald Trump destroyed presidential records by ripping up documents and then trying to flush them down the toilet. Only then, a staffer came in to use the bathroom afterwards and saw the blue pieces floating in the toilet and took the photos as evidence. This is the same FBI that used a fake document to then get a search warrant to spy on Trump's campaign and then try to smear him as a Russian agent and derail his administration for three years. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated? I don't know. Here's former Congressman Ron Paul talking back in 1988 about how the FBI were up to the same tricks back then. You know, most of our history, we didn't didn't have those institutions. The FBI came in uh, during the First World War. And interestingly enough, the one thing that Woodrow Wilson did, he used the FBI to spy on American citizens and actually arrest them if they disagreed with his foreign policy about going to war in Europe. And isn't it interesting how recent they used it in the Vietnam era? Democrats used it there. Republicans used the FBI to spy on a hundred different groups in this country, including the churches who disagree with the policy in uh, Central America. It almost looks like the FBI was designed to spy on Americans who might be disagreeing uh, with policy, especially the foreign policy. So the FBI, although I don't think I could condemn everything they've ever done, because I'm sure uh, some of the investigations and investigation of crime uh, has been beneficial, but that could be accomplished through Justice Department within our states. We wouldn't reject that uh, portion of it. But I think the, the FBI has uh, kept and continues to keep a lot of records records on a lot of individuals. The CIA has only been here since 1947. Their record is lousy. Here's a quote from a textbook called Understanding Lawyers' Ethics. This is a book that I own, by the way. This is a book that I've read. These are my yellow highlights. I didn't go to law school. I have a bachelor's degree in communication, but I have read a bunch of law books just because I find it to be a fascinating topic. It's about how some people like to abuse the legal system and what's called lawfare through selective prosecution. Quote, the first major issue of prosecutorial discretion is the decision to investigate. Justice Robert Jackson, who was a Supreme Court justice, called that the most dangerous power of the prosecutor because it enables the prosecutor to pick people he thinks he should get rather than pick the cases that need to be prosecuted. Irving Younger reflected on his own experience as a prosecutor, similarly observed that a prosecutor's power to damage or destroy another one he chooses to indict is virtually limitless. Bennett Garsham, another former prosecutor who was one of the most thoughtful commentators on prosecutors' ethics, noted that the prosecutor's decision to institute criminal charges is the broadest and least regulated power in American criminal law. When a prosecutor focuses on a person, Jackson said, it's not a question of discovering the commission of a crime and then looking for a man who has committed it. 
It is a question of picking the man and then searching the law books or putting investigators to work to pin some offense on him. At that point, law enforcement becomes personal, and the real crime becomes that of being unpopular with the predominant or governing group or being attached to the wrong political views. I've always been under the impression that when the January 6th Kangaroo Committee wraps up their pretend investigation, that the Justice Department wouldn't charge Trump with any crimes. They're just trying to erode support so that he hopefully wouldn't run again in 2024. And then Mayor Garland, though, however, would come out and say that they did find sufficient evidence that they believe he has committed the crimes but they're not going to indict him because it's the policy not to actually indict someone unless they believe that they can get a conviction. And then they'll say that because they would inevitably get some Trump supporters on the jury, that they would hang the jury and they would never convict, that they're not going to indict for that reason and then just blame Trump supporters for not being able to pursue justice. And they have plenty of evidence, but it's the policy not to actually indict unless they believe they can get a conviction. On the other hand, we probably shouldn't put anything past these people at this point, and if they don't indict them for something about January 6th, then maybe one of those FBI agents slipped a little classified document into his souvenirs at Mar-a-Lago, and they'll try to get him on that. But either way, we're a collapsing empire. Financially, intellectually, morally, politically, spiritually. You can see the writing on the wall. We may limp along for another generation or two, but you can see that we are rapidly approaching the cliff. The liberal media industrial complex endorses child drag queens, gays are adopting children, 20 million illegal aliens have invaded this country and are helping it go bankrupt and sucking off the rest of us. National divorce was trending again on Twitter last night. People are talking about secession and balkanization. And I always thought that if any states seceded from the union, it would be Republican states. People always talk about Texas seceding. But you know what? We are America. It's the liberal states which should secede. They're the ones who hate this country. They're the ones who hate all of the rights in the Bill of Rights. They're the ones who hate our history. They're the ones who hate our symbols. They're the ones who hate the very name of Washington, D.C. and the flag that represents this country. Whatever happens in the coming months and next year and a half as the 2024 election rapidly approaches, we are America. And no matter how much the liberals hate it, it's Trump's America. And order your Trump's America shirt from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Or if that's not your style, pick up a Trump was right shirt or a Trump 2024 shirt or any of my awesome designs, all available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.